DNA replication is done by the replosome, a complex structure made of many different enzymes and proteins working together. This system is best studied in E. coli, so we will illustrate the E. coli model of DNA replication. DNA replication begins with the unwinding of the DNA duplex, which is done by the enzyme helicase. DNA is unwound from its alpha helical structure and helicase uses energy from ATP to break the base pairing of nucleic acids. Behind the helicase, a primase is bound, which is not shown here. Primase creates an RNA primer for DNA synthesis. The original DNA duplex has now been separated into two parent strands, the leading strand and the lagging strand. DNA replication is bidirectional. New daughter strands of DNA are synthesized onto both parent strands simultaneously. However, the enzymes that synthesize DNA, DNA polymerases, can only move in one direction. Each strand of DNA has a 5' prime end and a 3' prime end. DNA polymerase can only synthesize DNA in the 5 to 3' prime direction. First, we'll look at the leading strand. E. coli has five different DNA polymerases. DNA polymerase 3, or POL3, is responsible for chromosome replication. DNA polymerase 3 acts within a larger holoenzyme. The POL3 holoenzyme is an assembly of different subunits that act together to synthesize chromosomes, many of which are not pictured here. With the help of the holoenzyme, POL3 binds to the leading strand at the side of the RNA primer. POL3 slides along the DNA strand in the 5 to 3 prime direction, using the leading strand as a template for creating the new strand. One at a time, free-floating nucleotides are incorporated into a new daughter strand, pairing with their corresponding nucleotides on the template or parent strand. The accuracy of the base pairing is called the fidelity. Polymerases avoid mistakes in replication through active site geometry and a 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity, which allows the polymerase to remove incorrect base pairs from the strand. The holoenzyme greatly increases POL3's fidelity and its rate in processivity. Processivity refers to the average number of nucleotides incorporated into the new daughter strand before the enzyme dissociates. POL3 has a processivity in the thousands, which is the direct result of a particular protein in the holoenzyme, the beta sliding clamp. The beta clamp binds tightly to the DNA while also being bound to POL3. The beta clamp then holds POL3 while it slides along the DNA. We know how important the beta clamp is for enhancing the DNA replication process through experiments that were performed to test those properties. Scientists created a controlled polymerase reaction and labeled the incoming DNTPs that would be used to make the daughter strand. They then analyzed the size of the daughter strand through agarose gel and autoradiography. The scientists found that when the beta clamp was present, the polymerase finished replicating the given chromosome within a few seconds. When the beta clamp was removed from the reaction, DNA synthesis was too slow to be observed. Without the beta clamp, the polymerase core would still be able to synthesize DNA. However, it wouldn't be able to stay attached to the parent strand for very long, meaning it would incorporate fewer nucleotides per binding event, therefore having lower processivity. The processivity of POL3 without the holoenzyme is 1 to 10 nucleotides per binding event, compared to 100,000 nucleotides with it. The experiments testing the function of the beta clamp also show that it enhances the rate of replication. The rate is the average number of nucleotides incorporated into the daughter strand per second. While rate and processivity are both measurements of DNA replication, rate is the measurement of time. The rate can be very fast or very slow. With the beta clamp, POL3's rate is 1,000 nucleotides per second, and without it, the rate is 10 nucleotides per second. This is because less dissociating of POL3 would also mean less time spent locating and rebinding to DNA, meaning a quicker overall reaction rate. These concepts of rate and processivity differ between different polymerases. To further understand this, we will now look at the lagging strand. As stated earlier, polymerases can only synthesize DNA in the 5 to 3 prime direction. Because of the orientation of the leading strand, Paul 3 can move along the chromosome in the same direction as the replication fork. The lagging strand, however, is in the opposite orientation. This means that Paul 3 must create a new strand by moving in the opposite direction of the replication fork. It accomplishes this by creating many small fragments of the daughter strand, called Okazaki fragments. Once DNA polymerase 3 has made these fragments, DNA polymerase 1, or Paul 1, comes back into the area. Paul 1 has a 5 to 3 prime exonuclease that degrades the RNA primer while synthesizing new DNA in its place. 
Paul I then seals the nick between Okazaki fragments, creating one cohesive new daughter strand. Because Paul I's function is to join fragments of DNA rather than replicate the entire chromosome, it has a much lower processivity than Paul III. Paul I has a processivity of 10 to 100 nucleotides, while Paul III's processivity is in the thousands. Similarly, the rate of the reaction is also determined by Paul I's function. Because it dissociates after sealing each nick and then rebinds at a later fragment, the rate is lower than Paul III's rate. 